Welcome to another episode of Digging Deeper. I'm Angie Pryor. I'm Danielle Kelly. And this is Ashley Nelson. Hello. Hey, Ashley. Ashley is our guest today. And Ashley, tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, I am Ashley. I've been a, I've been going to Chicago West, gosh, since the beginning. Uh, John and Danielle, we, I've known them since college, specifically my husband. Um, and my husband and I, his name is Zach. We've been married for 10 years. We've been in Chicago for the past six-ish years. Um, both went to school down in the city, but then did a little detour in Peoria, did you Illinois. Meet at, so sorry. No, did you meet at DePaul? No, he went to IIT. Oh, I went to okay. a smart school. I did not. <laughs> I went to DePaul. Um, and he actually did not want to come to Harvest for the longest time. He joined John's small group before oh, even what? coming. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you remember, you were my my flock That's leader. That's John said. I was <laughs> like, technically, I, it was Ashley Anderson, but then like you were involved in the Felicia Thurman. I knew okay. her better than I knew I you. was like, I probably did a terrible job because that was part of my like, I'm doing minimal stuff for Jesus season, <laughs> but I'm glad. That. The minimal season. Yeah. Oh, thanks. So did y'all meet at Harvest or? We met through Campus Crusade for Christ, a Christian ministry in Chicago. They did like all campus crew events. And so we actually, I was a very new believer and we, we actually met on the Green Line Austin stop or California. I know. Because very poor, I mean, the crew doesn't have a ton of money. And so they hosted our events in like, like very dangerous locations. And so we met one night, um, I was getting on the train, he was getting on the train and we just kind of waved. And um, then we have, (laughs) it was super awkward there for a while. We were friends for about a year. Both of us were, and I was like, not, and I just, you know, I was not about relationships in college. I have not had good relationships. Um, And so he was praying to the Lord. He's like, you know, why haven't, why don't I like her? Like we're always together. There's so many, you know, different characteristics. It's just makes sense, blah, blah, blah. And then one day the Lord, um, like he answered his prayer and then I guess he started liking me. And then it was like, it was like two years of like awkwardness. And then we got married um, after those two years of awkwardness, probably about three-ish years. And we've been married ever since. Wow. wow. Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I remember when y'all was about to get married or y'all had just mm-hmm. got married. And I was like, they both look like they're like 16. Oh, yeah. I'm like, why are they 20. getting married? They look 16. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so today we're going to go over our the sermon from Sunday, um, Marriage, Divorce, and the Grace of God. And um, this was just the awesome um Sermon is from Mark 10, 1 through 12, and then he also used Matthew 19, 1 through 10. And so he opened up a little bit about um, when he opened up, he op- he talked about um, his upbringing and, you know, how he grew up, how Danielle grew up, which is. I'm this, his wife. This is our pastor's <laughs> wife. I think they know. Well, if you're new. <laughs> right, people. right. It's my husband. Uh, so, um, so that brings me to my first question. Oh, we jumping we, in. Right. We mm-hmm. jumping all the way in <laughs> before we can even think about, like, talk about the sermon. I want to just ask y'all, growing up, what did marriage look like to you? Ooh. And what, what did marriage look like to you? And what did it mean to you before salvation? <sighs> Y'all both just looked at me. <laughs> I'll go first. Uh, so Pastor John had shared, my mom had me young. She was 15 when she had me. My dad was much older. They never got married, never stayed together. But my grandparents who we lived with, they, they're they married. They were married when I was growing up. So that was my first introduction to marriage. But my grandparents' marriage was not a godly marriage at all. And I think I observed more growing up in Philly on the on the block, other people. And I just remember my friend Danya across the street, I would go see her. And I just was so amazed that she had two parents that loved each other. And I kind of desired that, but um, not strongly. I feel like before Christ, I'm going to keep it real. I was like, I'm going to meet a man someday. We're going to live together and maybe we'll get married. Yeah, yeah. Like that was what I had in my mind. Even though nobody told me that, 
even though my mom, she never, she never had a live-in boyfriend. She, she didn't do that, but that was the concept in my head. And then when I became a believer, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is not guys. This, that's not how he wants it to happen. Right. And, and then I aligned with what God's design is for marriage. Okay. So that tell is. us how long have you been married? 13 years, Woo-hoo. 13 years, been married for 13 years and I'm grateful. I, mm-hmm. It's crazy because Pastor John talked about how we're giving our kids a reality that mm-hmm. we didn't have. Right. It's a new thing. And just like we're learning, I'm learning how to be a wife because in my family, I didn't have that example. I had mm-hmm. it when I in the church, right. when I started going to church and seeing those godly examples. But John didn't have, well, he did have his stepdad, but... He tried the best that he could. That's right. what I could say. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Wow. What about you, Ashley? <laughs> you know, this is so funny because I didn't, I mean, I came from a very, well, I shouldn't say very, a culturally Catholic family, culturally Hispanic Catholic family. So they have a lot of babies young and they don't get married. So I was the product loosely of a one night stand. Amy. me. Um, <laughs> But my parents, they stuck it out. So they never actually got married. The first, I, it was crazy. The first marriage in my family, you know, immediate family was my aunt and then my mom and then my me, then me all within three years. Really? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, the Lord, he's so good, but growing up. So my, I mean, I never actually wanted to get married. I really was like, I don't want kids. I don't want to get married. Like I just raised, you know, very independent. Um, And then I saw my mom love her. Mom, if you're watching this, love you. But like, I think she'd be the first to admit very unhealthy relationships that Mm -hmm. she had, um, you know, growing up after my parents split up. Um, My dad was an alcoholic for years. And so my mom took me and we moved around. She had a few different relationships. Um, They never really ended well until my bonus dad, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Hey, hey. (laughs) Um, That he came into my life during college and then Zach and I got married right after. So I really never wanted marriage until I met Zach. Uh, And then we went into our marriage just very, very intentional, uh, intentionally, and have just been really blessed by how the Lord has provided. And kind of like you, it's, you know, if we ever do have kids, it's like we're laying a new foundation, Mm -hmm. Um, something that I never experienced and something that I didn't even know was real until I honestly met Zach's uh, Zach's family. Praise Mm -hmm. God. Well, me, I'm like Ashley. Ashley, I didn't, like, I didn't really want to get married. Um until after salvation, then I really wanted to get married. Mm-hmm. But um, it was like, I just wanted to live with a man and see how it worked. But marriage was not like a thing. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a thing in my family. Uh, mm-hmm. My grandmother, my grandmother was married, but she was <laughs> she was married to a bunch of people. Okay. It, it was like, <laughs> it was like, maybe she married like three men okay over wow. over like my like my uh elementary years and my teenage so I didn't want that like I was like no I don't want that because it was always fighting mm-hmm. and stuff like that but my mom and dad never married my mom was a uh, a young mother she had me at 16 and my dad was like 17 mm-hmm. so you know he he didn't um you know he wasn't trying to get married. So that's that's my that's my story. But after I got saved, God blessed me with Mike, and He taught me uh, what covenant mean, meant, Oof. what marriage meant. And I'm like, oh, I gotta get married if I'm, you know, since I'm brave, I gotta be married if I want to be in a relationship. Okay. So yeah, so that's my story. We have so much in common. Like, mm-hmm. there's like common threads mm-hmm. through our. I think it's so great to share that because I feel like when you meet us and you would never think that that's a part of our story and mm-hmm. it is. And I think it just kind of destigmatizes some people's shame. And I mean, we live in a society that doesn't really value marriage right. mm-hmm. as a, com- a long term commitment. So I'm sure so many people listening can relate to a part of our stories. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we are examples of how God redeems, oh, how God redeems marriage. Mm-hmm. Like, because we never saw it, but we stepped out <laughs> and 
we trust God in our marriage. Yes. And we have pretty happy marriages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We sure do. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Pastor John, he defined marriage as a sacred union between one man and one woman for a lifetime in a covenant commitment with God. And he also state, stated that Satan hates godly marriages. And it's true. He does hate godly, godly marriages. And so that when he when when I um, heard him say that, I thought about our church. And when I was sitting there looking at the sermon, when I was in the in the church, I looked around and I saw all these godly marriages. Mm. But what I saw was so beautiful. Like these um, these people, they were like hanging on to one another. They were like, like I was like rubbing Mike's knee. It was like it was almost like. I felt like when when Pastor John was saying that marriage and the family is very important at Chicago West, I saw that. I saw that. And that was my first time really um, recognizing how blessed we are because we are surrounded by marriages that are godly. And Mm. so when the singles, we have a lot of singles in our church, but they are looking at us. Yeah. And they have a lot of examples. It's not just like from where I grew up um, in church at, it was one or two godly marriages. Mm-hmm. Right? But now when we look at, at our church, I see you and John. I see you and Zach. I see the uh, the Barons. I see Jerome and Stephanie. Yeah, you know, just right. all mm-hmm. these godly marriages that singles can go to and say, you know, how, how do we do this? Right, right. How do we do this? So our first um, our first thing that he talked about was sin has distorted God's design for marriage. And that is found in Mark 10, 1 through 9. Okay. Want to read that? Yeah. Mark chapter 10, verse 1 through 9. And he left there and he went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan and the crowds gathered to him again. And again, as was his custom, he taught them. And the Pharisees came up in order to test him and asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, in verse two, in verse two, it says in order, um, in order to test him, the Pharisees was looking for a way to get Jesus killed. So Jesus was currently within the jurisdiction of Herod Antipas, right? Who beheaded John the Baptist. And I wanted to say this because this was awesome. Like we know the story of John the Baptist, right? Mm hmm. But I never thought about it as John the Baptist standing on a biblical definition of marriage. Oh, yes. Um, right? Yeah. Right? Um, and he was like, you know, it's not good um, to marry your brother's wife. And so anyway, um, in verse two through four, they're asking like, is it okay for me to divorce my wife? And then in verse, um, ch- in verse 10, I mean, verse three says what does the law of Moses say and then Pastor John went through Deuteronomy 24 and all of that right Mm -hmm. and so the Pharisees see marriage more like a contractual agreement like a bank loan and so I was just have you have you guys ever heard this particular uh scripture this these uh verses of scripture preached Mm mm-hmm yeah, I have, but um, I think that obviously when the word is preached, it it's it, you get something different each time. So um, I can't remember. I can't tell you like this is the preacher that did, but I have heard 
this passage preached through before. What about you, Ashley? Yeah. You know, I actually have not. And okay. I, when this, when John was discussing this, I was, I'm like, sorry. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Like, say what? That is insane. I never, I mean, because today you think marriage is so haphazard. It's just like a very casual, it seems just to be very casual for a lot of people. Um, most don't even get married. A lot do prenups. And it reminds me of that same mentality of, mm -hmm. Hey, how do we get out of this? Where's our loophole so we can get out of this? Which is so shocking because I, like, marriage is a blessing. Yeah. So I was really surprised. Mm, I need to read the Bible closer. You know, what? <laughs> you know what? It made me think of, like, it just made me think of worldly marriages today was just the same as back then. Ain't nothing mm -hmm. new under the sun. Right. Even, mm -hmm. even, even when Moses gave them the commandment in um, Deuteronomy 24 and 1, I'm just going to read it. When a man takes a wife and marries her, if then she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her. And then Pastor John talks about what indecency is. And he writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house. And she departs parts out of his house he was just saying like Moses was giving them what did he say he said they didn't realize that Deuteronomy 24 was God's divine provision of grace oh yeah that was good for their sin. sin like he was giving them grace oh, I know. for their He's sin like, I don't approve of this but I'm going to give you grace since you're choosing to sin in this mm -hmm. yeah instead they saw it as God's divine blessing and approval of their dysfunction. This uh, provision of God's grace is rooted in the sinfulness, the sinfulness of their hearts. And so he talks about biblical grounds for divorce or whatever. But this is what stuck out to me. While every cause of divorce is not sinful, every divorce is caused by sin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Have you seen the negative effects of divorce on you or your family or even friends? Like, have you guys seen that? Well, yeah, I think just even my husband's story when um, he his his stepdad, which is like the only father he's known, it's his dad and his mom. When they divorce his life, his acting out, he didn't act out until after the divorce, like mm -hmm. his involvement in the streets, I think was his way of trying to lament and process and cope with the fact that his safe, the, his safe family was broken apart. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just, I think about the women in our church, the men in our church, people uh, that I know just divorce is devastating. Even with um, like the, the grounds for divorce, we talked about adultery, abandonment by an unbelieving spouse and abuse. It's like, even in those situations where it was best, God gave yes. permission for them to get out. It's so devastating. Mm -hmm. And the impact of it is not just Oh, that one time. If they they feel the impact for years, yeah, yeah, for years to come, it, it jacks up with their identity. It jacks yeah. up um, their community, yeah. especially within the church. When people divorce, uh -huh. then it's like, well, this is where where is my community? Do I stay mm. in this community with this man? Like, what what does that look like? So I just see that heartache, mm -hmm. and um, but I've also seen God bring redemption. Where yes. people have divorced and gotten remarried. I loved how um, Antoinette was on here yeah. and just shared her That's journey. So like, God, there's so much grace, so much grace. But yeah, I've seen that impact. Yeah, me too. It's been just, I mean, even just looking at, at my family and I mean, I just imagine it. If, you know, divorce or marriage, it's it's a covenant. It's a relationship with, with your spouse. It's unity before God. And I just picture it like someone's chopping down the middle of a tree uh -huh. and, you know, you can put it back together with like some, that tree stuff that they use those ropes, but it's, there's still going to be a mark there. There's going to be a scar. Mm -hmm. And so even when I was younger, I mean, I, and I love my parents, both my parents are absolutely amazing. And they really did raise me, even with my dad being an alcoholic as, as a team. So I was very blessed compared to a lot of people. But even then I remember, you know, crying seven years old, like, where's my dad? And, mm -hmm. and that really affecting my relationships uh, as I got older and just me getting hardened um you know hardened to the idea mm -hmm. of marriage and not knowing how to trust and not knowing I mean it just a whole bunch of stuff and like you said I mean the Lord redeems 
so much, so much in my life. I'm so thankful and brought my, my bonus dad. Um, but like he did not enter the family in a very kind of shady way. So we'll just leave that there. Mm -hmm. But even with that, it's the Lord brought redemption, but it's still, you have that baggage and you have those scars. And I don't really think you can, you know, there's grace, but you still have that. You have the memories, you have all of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh, can I share this too? It's like, I I mean, I haven't gone through a divorce, but I think about the, the marriages when a woman does choose to take a her husband's Mm -hmm. last name and then they get divorced and how even that having to you're known like if I got divorced from John that would be heartbreaking because it would be like am I going to stay Danielle Kelly Mm -hmm. or do I go back to Danielle Borgely like Mm -hmm. y'all didn't know that (laughs) weird last name of mine (laughs) French last name but like just thinking about, I'm just, we tried so hard to think of like a woman that could come on during this time with Ashley who is divorced. So I just want y'all to hear that. Like if you're divorced and you're like, I don't feel heard at the table. We tried our best and we want you to come on another time. We got to work within our constraints. But I just think about that woman that has been married for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. And it's like, what does that do psychologically to, to drop your married name who that, that who that, that's who you are who you are and go back or to keep it you know does that make sense mm-hmm. well it makes me think about so i had a friend when i first got saved and she was going through a divorce and she was really young and she described it which i didn't understand because at that time i was you know i was single i didn't really understand what she was saying but she was trying to express her trauma Mm. in the divorce and she was saying that it feels like you're being ripped apart and just think about it the two shall become one flesh Mm -hmm. and I was like you know just you know growing in Christ and reading the word I saw that like I saw that over just over the years of seeing people divorce in the world in the church she said it was like a pulling apart it was like her some someone inside of her was being pulled out of her Mm. slowly oh slowly and just to just to like kind of imagine that but what i want to say is if you are someone who's been divorced and you know, you're just kind of working through that. Listen to the sermon. There's so much compassion in that sermon. And Pastor John talks about, he just said, you know, there's therefore no condemnation. Mm -hmm. Like we know that in the word, God restores, he redeems, he will redeem you. So even if you, even if you don't see yourself at this table, believe me, you have a seat at the table. Amen. You have a seat. (laughs) <laughs> yes. So, so a better table too. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's a better table than here. Don't don't be <laughs> like. I, I, I know the table you're at is way better than the one that we're sitting at. I mean, I love y'all, but you know what I mean. Jesus is better. So then he talks about uh, what isn't grounds for divorce. <laughs> I love this. The fire's gone from our marriage. He or she doesn't um, do what they used to do. They've gained weight. We are always arguing. Because marriage is to be held in the highest esteem, divorce should not be our first impulse, even in situations when divorce is permissible. And Mm -hmm. I'll share this. Like I remember when me and Mike first um, got married, I was so immature. Like, oh my God. I remember like our maybe our third argument I was like I want a divorce and so we really had to sit down and talk and he was like don't let divorce be a part of uh, the language language. Mm -hmm. right don't let divorce be an option Mm -hmm. like why is divorce an option and that was it and (laughs) 19 years later but I'm just Mm -hmm. saying it's it was easy for me to say it because I had, you know, been in the world for so long and that was the thing, you know what I'm saying? But then to sit down with him, this is a man who really, like he studied about marriage and all this stuff. So I didn't know what was going down. I just, I wanted to get married. Mm. So, but anyway. Do you feel like he took it more serious? He did. He absolutely did. And because of that, I started 
get myself together, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. right, um, we're just going to transition to the next point. He says marriage is a sacred institution created by God. Uh, Mark 6 um, and 9. Can you read that? Yep. But from the cre beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Can you read Matthew 19, 4 through 6? Yes. And he answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate. Mm, I love that, um, that scripture. <laughs> <laughs> so from the beginning, Pharisees wants to start with what Moses said about marriage. Jesus starts with God's original creation oh, of marriage. So good. Mm -hmm. Jesus was like, I got y'all. Um, Jesus goes back to the Garden of Eden. Marriage was created before sin entered the world. Mm -hmm. Marriage is God's idea and God's design, not ours. We don't get to define it, recreate it, change it, or question it. So here's a question. When you witness how the world around us recreate marriage, what is your response? And are you somewhat immune to it? Mm. <laughs> like, Ooh. what do you think? Like, when you see all these um, different marriages and when you see, like, all these um, these marriages that fail in Hollywood, <sighs> you know, um, mm. Ashley, why don't you take that one first? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's always another person at the end of any relationship. There's always people, baggage. I mean, there's always just a ton of stuff that, like, I even think when you're, at least when I first started dating Zach, we went into it really seriously with the intention of getting married, which was totally new to me as a new believer. I'm like, what is this? This is like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I look at all these families, and, all, and I've just been in the counseling room with other people as, as a counselor, and it's like, it just, people have this crafted idea of marriage in their head and it's just not what God designed. Mm -hmm. um, it's just sad. Yeah. It's selfish. Yeah. Selfish. It's selfish. It is selfish. I mean, I feel like I was praying so much when Pastor John was preaching this sermon because this part in particular, we don't define it. Mm -hmm. And I think just in our society, who marries who and who's allowed to marry who it's like that is not god's design right um and so i i it's even raising my children mm -hmm. um it's been very challenging to navigate marriage period but how the world defines marriage and to sit down with them and say well this is what the word this is this is not just what the word is but like let let's go back to the beginning yes. let's look at the beginning of what god designed and how he called it good right. and what happens when sin enters and how we try to do our own thing and and understand that like our society would say that i'm hateful or whatever yeah. and, and like and that's not the case it's just like i'm trying to and it's still with my kids of like this is God's design but we don't treat people who step out of God's design right. whether they're in a gay marriage or uh they're 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 not believers <laughs> and they're getting together or they're unequally yoked because we don't like to talk about that word anymore right, right. um like that whether you step out of God's design like God still loves you but there are consequences so I think like it's it's just hard for me. I feel really grieved by it. Um, oh, I feel like kind of emotional. Mm. I I feel grieved because as Christians, we're supposed to be witnesses or mm. make disciples. Mm -hmm. And like, how do you engage with someone that's in a marriage? And I'm not talking about just gay marriage, but like, how do you engage and try to speak life and uh, point someone to Christ when they don't they don't hold their marriage in a high degree or they do but it's not guys design yeah that's the thing it's like some people are like no i do hold it but it's like well 
it's not the way God designed it. So I don't know. I don't think I'm immune to it. I think I'm very grieved by it mm-hmm. and uh, grieved by our society. But also, we talked about earlier, there's nothing new under the sun. Right. Oh, I know. There's nothing new. Like when, when you're, when I think about the Old Testament, um, I was reading a scripture in Genesis about Noah and how the Lord was just so grieved. And like the scripture, it says that the the hearts of men were like every i'm paraphrasing every thought or like intention of the heart was evil yeah yeah okay. continually like and i can't even imagine i thank god we don't know what was going on mm-hmm. that we don't know the details but it had to be so ridiculous that god was like i'm starting over mm-hmm. and, you know and then so i don't know i just think about that it just it's not it's nothing new the romans were ridiculous <laughs> you know what i mean That's like church of corinth the church of, like they were ridiculous but i don't know i think um for me um i think i am grieved by it but i think the biggest thing for me is like i don't know why i get so um grieved by and even like saddened by when I see people in the news or you know famous people who have been married for three years five years like I'm like man I just it's like I be rooting I be rooting for people in Hollywood (laughs) I be rooting like like um I'm not gonna mention names but it's a couple like they to me are a power couple and I heard they were divorced, divorcing, and I'm like, man, like it just, it just makes me so sad. And I do spend some, t- I do spend time praying for these people that I see, that I admire, that I love, that I see on camera, that sometimes I listen to their songs, whatever. You know, I see that, and I'm just like, God, can you redeem them? Can you, can, can it be like a, a, a testimony where they wasn't saved and you saved them in their marriage? And you know, I just mm-hmm. be so that that's the part that really that really grieves me. But when I see the recreation of marriage, like gay marriage, or I have to stop myself from being a judge. Mm-hmm. I have to, I have to, because. When you look at people in the world, they just don't know. They're ignorant to it. They don't know. They're just following their desires. You know, their fleshly desires. You know what I was thinking of, too? Of Like, when when you were talking, I kept thinking, man, it's such a spiritual attack Mm -hmm. on... It's uh, on marriage Mm -hmm. of like the enemy wanting it to be redefined. He wants divorce to happen. He wants that damage to happen because it derails us. Mm -hmm. It 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 can separate. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, but it can put these barriers in the way of us walking in the fullness of Mm -hmm. like the abundance Mm -hmm. of the Lord and who we are. Yeah. What about you, Ashley? You know, I keep thinking about the kids, um, you know, products of divorce, products of, and even kids, just because that's when I, I mean, my parents never got married, they were never divorced, but they split up. And I just had a lot of wounds and a lot of shame because I grew up in a wealthy Jewish area and everyone's parents were married, everyone's. So I had to go to divorce counseling when I was seven, like seven years old um, in school during recess, uh, which was, I know, I know. I know they had snacks, but you know, um, but so what I keep going back to, and I actually was going to ask you, Danielle, uh, and, and you too, Angie, what, do you have any advice for moms and dads raising kids who are going to confusing schools and, you know, maybe they want to take their kids out and homeschool. Maybe they want to just because of what they're hearing, what the mm-hmm. kids are hearing. Um, the reason I asked that is because I was just in a counseling session and, um, this, the parents were trying so hard to like help their baby understand like, Hey, this is what your school teaches. This is what we don't teach. Mm. And here's why. And they're debating pulling them out of school. Mm. Mm. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I feel like the best advice that I have is to hold the ground Mm -hmm. to be like, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is, this is what the word of God says, but also just 
talk about the character of God and his love and the reason why that's yes. helped me. Like, I'm just, I don't even know if this is the right answer. You know what I mean? Cause I'm just, I'm walking through it and I'm like, Lord help me because I say yes. On one hand, you could take them out of school, but what do you do when they're 18? Right. Mm -hmm. What do you do when they're in college? Right. Like we have to prepare them to know how to live in the world, but not be of it mm -hmm. and be okay. The other thing too, this just came to me is that I've had to surrender the understanding for my kids. Like I'm like, Lord, help them get it because I can't force them to even agree with me. I can tell them the truth, but I can't say like, you must believe the truth. Like that's a decision that you have to make. So I feel like for those parents of, you know, you, you have to make that decision. For some kids, you might need to pull them out. Yeah, You do, you may need to pull them out. And for others, you may leave them in, but I would say don't waver, like be so strong in being committed to the word of the Lord. Yeah. And, and like I said, just reminding them of the why behind it, where I always tell my kids, did God not love Adam and Eve because he told them to get out of the garden? Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, he loved them. And I'm like, yeah, he did. But there were consequences. And this is mm -hmm. the fallout of it. But it doesn't remove his love from them, if that makes sense. What about I like that? Um, so I thought about the scripture, train up a child in the way he should go and he would not depart. And I think about like my kids, even though my kids are on a struggle bus for salvation. <laughs> Here's what I would say. I, I I I taught them. I taught them what godly marriage is. I taught them, you know, what the right way of being married or relationships. You know, we just we taught them the word of God, right? And so today, they know that. They know like I hear them saying, my daughter is 28, my son is 22. I hear them saying stuff like, can you believe so and so did this? Can you believe they got married? You know, and I'm just like, you're not even walking with the Lord. <laughs> but this was something that they were taught. Exactly. This was like like when you teach a certain thing in your home, it is going to be in your children. So they have that foundation. When they decide to really walk with the Lord, it's going to be awesome. You know what I'm saying? But I think that it takes prayer. It takes the constantly, yeah. constantly being in step with the spirit because I did pull my kids out of out of school and I and we homeschooled them. We homeschooled Isaiah till he was in sixth grade and patience all the way through high school. But when she got out of high school, it was a whole different story. But that's what we did. And, you know, it's I, like such a trust in the Lord. It is. Like, it's like because each child is different. different. Each child is different. But when you teach them what you want them to know in your household, they're going to keep it. I believe that is the word of the Lord. It's going to be in their mind. Like alcohol, like my kids. Like they always having like negative things to say about alcohol, about all these things. And I'm just like, why are you not living for the Lord? Mm -hmm. You know, but it was things that we taught them. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is. I don't know. Was that helpful? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, totally, totally. It's yeah. totally a trust. It's confusing being a kid. <laughs> yeah. It is. In this day and age. It is. But going back to that is like. Look how we all shared about how we we didn't even have the truth the point. growing up. Mm -mm. We didn't. We did not have the truth, but the Lord aligned, like he realigned us when he got a hold of our hearts and said, okay, this is my, de like, not just the design for marriage. This is the way. Go walk in. Go walk in. <laughs> Period. <laughs> like, this is the way to live your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes and yes. I would even just add, like, this is the way to live your life, but, like, here's the fruit. Here's the Come blessing. On, because Ashley. my husband, Zach, is my best friend. And, yeah, we have hard times, but we've been, it'll be 10, 11 years on Sunday. Oh, my I know. Gosh. It just happened. I'm not wearing my wedding ring. But That's because I crushed my knuckle. So oh. don't even worry. Not sending some little messages. <laughs> <It's just, laughs> I remember when y'all first got married. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Oh and God's been so great. He's been so good through, that, through our whole entire, like I have a lot of issues in my life and my marriage isn't one of them. And I'm very, very thankful. And I think God has really been very kind, super, super kind. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you could say the same for you. Oh yourselves. yeah, Amen. for sure. Amen. For sure. What God has put together, let no man put asunder. Anyway, that just came to mind. Mm -hmm. I have another question, but I kind of want to move on. Okay. Go so, through your thing. 
Pastor John asks this question. Have you ever considered that God's holy and sacred view of marriage is seen in how often he uses marriage to describe oh, his good. relationship with his people? That was good. That was so good. So there's three scriptures. I'm going to read one. Danielle will read one. And then Ashley will read one. So Isaiah 54 and 5 says, For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. Mm. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. And Revelation 21, 2 is, And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. <sighs> That last one's a kicker. Amen. Do you feel, I feel like when he said this, I'm like, the next wedding I'm going to, I go to, I'm going to just see it different. Like when the bride is coming down of like, that is the church, like coming to her maker or her husband. Oh, um, that reminds me of, um, I don't know where I remember this from, but you probably remember it too. It's like a story of the bride coming down the church, coming down the aisle. But this bride, her dress was all torn. Mm. She had holes in her dress. And it was like, that's the church. But when Mm. she got to the altar, I still married her. (sighs) That makes me feel all warm inside. Right, right. All right. So I had this question. In this passage, Jesus... Jesus is elevating the importance of commitment to marriage over the nuisance of when divorce would be acceptable. Thinking broadly about commitment, what is the most difficult, y'all, part of being committed to another person? In your marriage, we're going to say in your marriage because we are all married. What is the most difficult part? Just being committed. (sighs) I have an idea and this relates to me. I was raised very independent and our first fight, which I was like, I had to go to a thing in Chicago. We, when we were living in Peoria, I just decided like, I'm gonna go visit my friend this weekend. So I booked a, I booked a train ticket. I was like, all fine. And I'm packing. It's actually, where are you going? <laughs> you thought you was married? <laughs> I'm gonna go visit my friend in Chicago. We're gonna go to anthropology. And he's just like, you didn't ask? I'm like, what do you mean ask? <laughs> but honestly, it just didn't like independence. And that was, and then, you know, of course, like it was fine, but that was literally our first fight. It was like, I'm going to go do this thing. But I think like independence is huge because especially now and in this culture, we are, you know, we, and, and we have our own phones, we have our own social media worlds, we have our own house, but it's like technology and all of that stuff. And even what we're hearing in the media, it's all about independent, be your own boss. Mm-hmm. Um, And I think compatibility too, because, you know, I I hear a lot of marriages and it's really sad. They just, they end because they're just not compatible. It's fine. Like they grew apart. And for me, I'm like, that is, that is like the reason that's like the easy, the easy thing. Like you can stay in a marriage if you're not compatible. Um, But I think independence and compatibility are, are huge. And Mm. yeah. So anyway, we're still married. I did end up going to Chicago. (laughs) And I came back. <laughs> Praise God. Praise oh, God. Right. God. It's so funny. Good times. Good times. Um, I think that, oh, this what comes to me. The most difficult part is when they wound you for giving. Oh. Mm. Like when you're in, I'll speak marriage, but I think it translates where friendships, because friendships, you can be like, I'm deucing <laughs> from this. But in marriage, keeping that commitment has been like, you have deeply wounded me. Now I have to wrestle through forgiving you and seeing your face land next to you, mm-hmm. you know, like, and r- like just wrestle through that process and then c- trusting the Lord will bring you through the other side. That is difficult. That is difficult to, to be committed or even be committed when somebody, and for someone who's single, doesn't have to be um, uh, the person you're married to. But who has God called you to be committed to? Mm-hmm. What what friendship has he uh, called you to be committed to? What uh, family member has mm-hmm. he called you to be committed to? And it can be so easy when that person is in a difficult space, yeah. when they're on the struggle bus, to like be in it. 
mm -hmm. long term. That's like good point. that is difficult where you're like, this has been going on for a long time. <laughs> when is it going to stop? I think for me, I thought about communication. Like, yeah, like I, I'm the type of person, if something is happening in my relationship, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to say it. I'm not going to hold it. A lot of times I don't even pray about it. I'm just going to say it. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, my husband is not like that. <laughs> He's not. And I think that is like our strong, um, that's, that's the thing where the enemy tries to get in between me and him is communication because I'm huge on communication and He's not. He'll sit on it. He'll pray about it. And then it's it's so funny because I'll tell myself all these stories about what he's thinking or or like what where he's at. That's a lie because mm. I just made that up in my head because I felt it. And um, yeah, yeah, it's just difficult when you are the person who wants to communicate and the other person really wants to um, wait and let God handle it so that he can, like my husband, he really wants to care for my heart mm. and he don't, and he don't want to say stuff that's going to hurt me. Yeah. So he yeah. will sit on whatever and that, and it's taken me, I will say mm, 15 years to understand that that's how he is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I'm, and that's how god has made him and that's and that's what god wanted for me right right and i think about that mm -hmm. for for, for y'all too like the guys that god has blessed y'all with the mm -hmm. husbands is the ones y'all need yeah mm -hmm. it's the amen one, it's, it's the one y'all need a thousand <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So Pastor John went over six questions <clears throat> that will strengthen your marriage. <laughs> okay. So these are the questions. I'm not asking y'all to answer these questions or whatever. But what I will say is when Pastor John read these questions, I felt like they were like a fist blow to, to my jaw and then to the other jaw. And to, like every time he said it, I just felt like this punch okay mm -hmm. what are some things that you've been forced to carry that you shouldn't have because of me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I wasn't thinking about it in terms of asking my husband or receive like receiving his you know like putting it mm -hmm. on him I received it like me him saying it to me mm -hmm. what about y'all like what about if I'm you trying to like to, hold it together right now. If you had to, and I, I know these, these are all questions, but I no, I just like, <laughs> I'm like trying to. Well, let me just finish reading Oof. them and then y'all can tell me uh -huh. which ones stick out the most to you. How has supporting me caused you to abandon yourself? Ooh, Lord. What, are, what are some ways that you have felt unseen, neglected, and unsupported by me? What are some behaviors, patterns, or routines that you'd like to see me change? What are some pains that you've always wanted to tell me but felt too afraid because you felt it would hurt me? Mm. How can I bring relief, love, and strength to your life? So what sticks out to me was um, this number five. What are some pains that you've always wanted to tell me but felt too afraid because you felt it would hurt me? And so me and my husband kind of discussed this one a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he was telling me, it's some things that we have to hold. You know, like 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 I just said, God designed these men for us, these men, these husbands. And I believe that for me, there's a lot of things that my husband, you know, has wanted to tell me. And there's a lot of things that I've wanted to tell him, but not feeling led by the Lord to really tell them, but just holding it, giving it to the Lord and praying about those those things. So that's what kind of mm, stuck out to me. What about you? What was the most impactful question? I don't, I feel like I'm really trying not to cry right now. Mm. Um, because 
these questions came from a difficult time that Pastor John and I were going through. And I was having a conversation with the Lord and I was like, he does not see me. I was so angry and upset. And I just was like, like pouring my heart out to God because I didn't feel like I could say it to John. And uh, later that week, he he was like in a, he went somewhere um, and he came back and he handed me a pink three by five card with these questions on it. And I'm like, did somebody tell you to do this? <laughs> God. <laughs> and he's like, no, I just, I just felt led. Whoa. I just felt led. And I, I was like, first of all, God sees me Amen. and my pain. Um, but I don't even have one, Angie, because it was all, he said there was eight. There was all eight of them for wow. me because it was so specific to it was God like these questions are not from Pastor John they're from God Amen. and God crafted them y'all are just getting the fruit of it but like God crafted them I like I really believe that God was like I hear you mm -hmm. and I'm working in him and he I, I will make him see you and so like I was speechless when he read these questions to me. And then I, I then I was like, man, am I gonna have the courage to be honest with him? Mm -hmm. And then when I... I'm about to take these home and right. fill them out and give them to my... No. Yeah, no, it was just, <laughs> yeah, it was just heavy. So I think all of them and then uh, having the humility to say, what about me? Mm -hmm. And he was so gracious with me. Like he was, he said way less to me than I said to him. Wow. Um, but I feel like it needed to happen. And I will say doing the hard work of this has changed our marriage. And then when he preached and shared those questions, I was just like, wow, God, you really do redeem like our pain and hear this intimate thing that was between me, him, and the Lord now is a tool that the Lord can use to strengthen marriages in the church. Um, and you know, he got his doctorate and <laughs> like, I've, I've given up a lot for Pastor John, Dr. Reverend Pastor, whatever, John, <laughs> to be where he's at. And sometimes like it's cost me, mm -hmm. it's cost me. So to be on the receiving end of like being asked these questions and having the freedom to share that, but to also get the support. Cause it's like, how can I bring relief, love and strength to your life? Mm -hmm. That was so special to me where he's like, I, you've given up a lot for me. So I'm like, what can I do for you? Whoa. And I think like, even in marriage, sometimes it is so self-centered. It's mm -hmm. so about me, 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 me. And yeah, so anyway. That was yeah. hard. I like you were asking those questions, and I was like, "Oof!" I felt the I felt the emotions that I, I can like remember where I was in our house. I was sitting on our bed. I can remember that moment. You know what? When I said God created these guys for us, God created you for Pastor John, mm -hmm. because a lot of women wouldn't have, wouldn't have stayed. A lot of women would have been deuces. They would have been out. Yeah. But thank you for staying. Thank you. Thank you for staying. Thank you for being his intercessor. Mm -hmm. Thank you for crying mm -hmm. out to God that he can bring us these questions. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. Danielle First Lady Kelly. Stop. Nobody's allowed to call me that. Danielle Dr. Kelly. No one Dr. is allowed Danielle to call Kelly. me that. Yeah. Dr. Danielle Kelly. Oh my gosh. I did say with that one, I was like, I, I feel like my name needs to be up on that degree. Cause <laughs> but yeah. Wow. But yeah, what about you, Ashley? Yeah. I know, well, I just <laughs> we I I really I love actually question number four patterns behaviors or routines you'd like me to see to like to see me change 
Um, and I love this last question. How can I bring relief, love, Ooh. and strength to your life? I think like I mean, marriage is hard. I mean, yeah. as much as I love my marriage, it's hard. And you're right. It is very selfish. And I can be very self-centered and all in my head. And it just took Zach one. So I'm going to get a little personal. So we were fighting to like a year ago. I forget exactly about what. But he just said, like, wow, if I said those things to you oh. that you just said to me, you would be in tears. And it took me aback because I'm like you. I'll speak my mind. But I don't like conflict. So I'll say something and then I'll retreat. And that broke me. I was like, oh. And, and it's true. I mean, yes, Zach's strong. But, like, there are things I can do to bring love and relief and strength to him. And so that those questions, four and six, it's like, oh, it's convicting. Mm -hmm. The Lord used those questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are very convicting. So on that note, we're going to end. We're not even going to go through the last one because I think that. And I, I feel wanna, like I'm like, I don't know what if I, I can wanna, make it through another one. What I want to end with, I want all of us, I want every one of us to just pray. Like we want to, we're going to pray for the singles in our church, those who desire to be married, we want to pray for those who have been divorced, those who are married and struggling, but just marriage in general, you know, not just in our church, but anybody who will watch this video. And so I'll start, Father, I just thank mm -hmm. you so much um, just for giving us an opportunity to, to walk through your word, to dig deeper in your word. I thank you. Um, that our pastor is preaching line upon line and precept upon precept. And here we are, God, in a, in a chapter that talks about marriage and what godly marriage really is. Mm. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you for the marriages in our church. And I thank you for allowing me Sunday to see the beauty of marriages in our church, the beauty of those leaders um, that are married, those just people in the congregation that are married, that were really holding on to one another and really uh, valuing the the uh, sacred covenant of marriage. And so God, I thank you for those marriages. And I ask you, Father God, to uh, strengthen each and every one of them as we went over those uh, questions, Father God. And, and I know people were really um, blown away by these questions. Father, I pray that we will take those questions, God, and we will war with them. Mm. We will war in the spirit with your word, Father God. And God, our, our, our marriage will be strengthened. God, you said what you have put together, let no man put asunder. So Father, I speak life, God, to the marriages, Lord God, that will listen to this digging deep. I speak life to your your marriage. I speak life. I pray that God will surround your marriage with songs of deliverance. I pray that forgiveness and redemption and just all the things will be surrounding your marriage. I pray that you will put God first, that we will put God first in our marriage, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I pray that you will strengthen our covenants. Strengthen our covenants, Lord. I pray for the family, the, the children, or even those who have been wounded by divorce and wounded even in marriages, the kids, Lord, the products, Lord God, of just like all the things that we have done in our marriage that our kids see sinful things, God. Would you restore those things? Mm. Would you build the children up? And God, I just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I thank you so much for the singles. God, I loved how Pastor John reminded all of us that marriage is not the highest prize. It, is, <laughs> it just isn't. And I just pray that for singles not to feel less than, to feel like they don't belong in the body of Christ, that they don't belong at Chicago West. It's not, that's just a lie from the pit of hell. And I just pray for those singles who don't have the gift of singleness. I'm going to pray these um, steps over them that Pastor John said that while they're waiting, I pray that they would be the kind of person they want to marry, that yes. they would work on their character, that they will work on their relationship with you, that they would heal from trauma, that they would do the therapy that they need. Um, I pray that they would deal with their baggage now and not later. Um, I loved how Pastor John said that whatever we don't heal, we transfer. So I just pray that they would take healing serious and mm. not think that things will get better later. They don't. I think all of us at the table can testify that when we don't 
let you heal us, we bring it into our marriage and it can bring a lot of damage in our marriage. And honestly, Lord, that step of healing might prevent a future divorce, God. So I pray also that they would take advantage of your resources, that they would learn what it's like to um, be a follower of Christ, to have healthy relationships, um, that those desiring marriage would take the time to get premarital counseling. And lastly, Lord, I pray that they would just enjoy life, that they would travel and laugh and explore and have joy and not let um, singleness be this thing that weighs them down, but that they would have fun, have fun with you, Lord. And I lift these things up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, I just want to thank you so much for digging deeper and for Angie and for Danielle and how they seek out time to dive into your word and and understand the sermon and how they bless so many others. And Lord, I'm so grateful for the sermon that was preached this Sunday. I really needed to hear that uh, for so many different different ways. And so I'm so grateful, Lord. And I just really want to specifically lift up anyone who's in relational conflict right now. We know that Dating relationships, marriage relationships, divorce, all of that is devastating. It's yeah. devastating, Lord. And it it has consequences and it, it affects so many things that we're, we just can't even see. And Lord, we know that the enemy is, is the person. He, he's behind it. He's yes. the reason why there is death and divorce and destruction. So Lord, I just pray um, a prayer of protection over over us, over Chicago West, over every single person listening to this. Lord, I pray that the enemy doesn't get an inroad into their life through conflict or through relational trauma. And Lord, I just, um, I thank you for being our deliverer. I thank you for being our protector. And God, I just ask that you would heal any relational trauma that's going on right now and, and whoever is listening to this in their lives. Lord, we I've seen you personally do amazing things in my family, and I I ask that you would do the same for um, those experiencing walking through a divorce or breaking up with a boyfriend or entering into a new season with their with their spouse. That's um, that's just I don't know unpredictable. Yes, God and Lord, I just thank you so much that you are our um, you're our Father. Mm -hmm. We have you to look to as an example for what a good marriage is like. We have your word and we're so grateful for how specific and how kind you are, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you so much for your love. And we just lift all of these up to your name in your name. Amen. Amen. So good. Oh, so we are done. Chicago West. And Chicago West, you are loved. loved.